You know, it's a it's a it's a janky game. It's it's a doggy dog world in this music industry. No contract. You know, I know everybody's in Mo 3's ear talking about Mo, you know, Rainwater's janky. And right. Don't don't fuck with him. He did me this way back in the day. How did y'all get through that? Cause you said you had to build your trust. Uh, we just different situations, you know, like different situations with three. Uh, you know, at the time though, you know, we can't we made it with each other, and so um, you know, sometimes we went over each other house and ate. You know what I'm saying? What you cooking? We pick them over there. You know what I'm saying? Or, or what you got going on? Like so, you know, we uh we survived with each other. When it's time to go on the road. We put our money together and go to them shows. You know, when it was time for the, when it was time to come out with his first CD, his first mixtape album, even the per the person I ain't, the person that was around Mo Three before I met him wouldn't even put in on this first album. So you know what I'm saying? So me and Mo Three, he asked somebody in his circle, and I asked somebody in my circle. We put that money together, and that's how we printed up the first shot of CD ever. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So you know, uh. We just we felt like we felt like we came up together. Like when we first bought our first cars, we, we you know what I'm saying, like we came up together. I always say Mo Three was the last artist I think we've seen in America to really break through selling CDs. Like Mo Three peaked right when CDs were coming obsolete. Right. I don't believe he's the last artist though. Uh, Who I was the last. I believe Dun Dun and Number Seven go sell a lot of a lot of CDs too. You you think CDs are still a thing? Yeah, uh, Mo Three last CD, um, the Shadows Forever CD album, I sold those for a hundred dollars. CDs. Yeah. Crystal discs. Yeah, I, yeah, I saw I, uh, uh, physical copies. I sold those. For, uh, those those were selling for a hundred dollars. I paid for Mo Three listening party with with those. Like no disrespect, Mo Three. It's Mo Three. He's deceased. Like th them CDs are mem that's memorabilia at this point. Right. Kid up and coming artists. Can yeah. They still move CDs how how Mo3 was doing it. It's, uh, it's 2021. Uh I be, I believe I believe that's how I'm gonna kick off their career off them CDs. So they might not do it as, just like Mo3, but everybody don't have everybody don't play everybody don't have a Zilla record. Everybody in their cars don't have Bluetooth. It's somebody in America and somebody hood they still riding around with them CD players in their car. They just didn't go away. So um uh my promotion skills when they album drop, I'm a uh I'm gonna print up. I'm gonna print up by ten thousand CDs and give them away free to the local uh, stores, and 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 I'm gonna give them away free till people want to buy them. Okay. And I remember talking to Mo Three in the interview. This was probably five years ago, and he told me that he made well over a hundred grand off selling CDs. Oh yeah, he did. Early. Yeah, he did. He did. He shocked me because I wanted to give them away. So, so like the CD that we printed up, you know, I used my money. But my my half, he used, we went half on it, so we split it down the middle. So after we split it down the middle, three took his CDs and sold them. But I passed mine out so people could know who Mo Three is. But he had, but he shocked me though. Like he had cars pulling up. You'd think he was selling drugs. He was just selling CDs. Yeah. And all this, I remember he told me he was just posted outside. He used to rap for people, and and then people would be like, "Damn man, here, here go five ten dollars." Like this when nobody knew him. Yeah, 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 he, yeah. Because he, you could just tell him a rap, your rap. Every time Mo Three dropped a mixtape, he bought a new chain and a car. So if you go back and see them pictures, every picture that you seen the first out, the first um, shotters, he didn't have a, he didn't have no, he didn't have, he had, he didn't have no jewelry on. Second shotters, he had jewelry on. He just upgraded every album, even to the day, even to the day he he passed away, like. The last old summer chain, he went to go buy a sixty, seventy thousand dollar big gorilla chain, platinum. You know what I'm saying? So I fuck with number seven. Uh -huh. I love Don Don music, but I, I just don't think the Mo Three blueprint could be duplicated. I just, uh, I believe, uh, I believe Don Don gonna be Don Don's gonna be huge. Yeah, I'm no, yeah. And, 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 and I'm not saying he's not gonna be huge, but the CDs, the the struggle, the you know Mo Three. He he had to go through hoops, you know, the the, the fake watch busters. I don't think that shit could yeah, be duplicated. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, 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 some some of the obstacles that he went through, he, nobody could ever go through that again. You know, uh, that's why 
I always told people, even when he was alive, people didn't understand that the stuff that Mo3 had to go through, nobody in the state of Texas had ever had to go through that. Because they followed protocol. Three ain't never followed protocol. I ain't never followed protocol. So we know we stood out and did what we thought was best. You know, um, you know, when I met three, uh, and really I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna say it like this, I changed the game in Texas. Because when I met three, everybody was on this fast paced club tempo type of music, even Houston. Houston had, had outgrew J Dog, and they was trying to find themselves into this fast paced club music too. You know, it's Dallas, that's all it was on. And I kept telling three the more you show your pain and sing your pain, you know, it go change the game. I remember to this day, people didn't know, people always said Mo3 music would never make it this far because it wasn't the club songs. And now it's basically the sound of Dallas. Dallas actually got their own identity right now. Everybody trying to sound like Mo3. Everybody trying to sound like Mo3. You know what I'm saying? If a Mo3 song come on, it sound like they in church because the whole club singing now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mo3 took it possible for a street nigga to make a club nigga and a person who doing negative find Jesus through his music. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, I preached that to him at the early age because if people go listen to Mo3 first songs, he was doing a lot of rapping and, you know, and we, you know, we grew together, you know.